Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible strategy. strategy. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Do you sometimes feel we're stuck in a time warp? The World Mental Health Federation has since 1992 designated the 10th of October as the Global Mental Health Day. The theme for this year was Working to Prevent Suicide, a day for 40 seconds of action. Everybody globally was encouraged to set aside a minimum of 40 seconds on that day to promote suicide prevention. The world is talking about suicide and has been doing so for a long time. Why? Because every 40 seconds, someone on the globe ends their own life by suicide. This equates to approximately 800,000 people annually. Because suicide rates have globally increased by 60% in the last 45 years. Because for every confirmed suicide globally, there are believed to have been 10 further attempts. Because suicide is the commonest cause of death of men aged 49 years globally. And the second highest cause of death of men aged 15 to 25 years. Bringing it closer to home, World Health Organization has ranked Nigeria as having the 15th highest suicide rates globally. Shockingly, in most countries, the male suicide rate far outstrips that of females. However, in Nigeria, the rate of male suicide is only marginally higher than that of females. Therefore, although male Nigerian suicide rates are ranked 56 globally, female suicides are ranked the third highest in the world. So what is Nigeria doing about suicide? Sadly, the answer is not very much. The World Health Organization came up with a mental health action plan which began in 2013 and which ends in 2020. The overall aim of the plan is the global imperative to reduce suicide by 10% by 2020. Objectives of the action plan include strengthening effective leadership and governance for mental health and implementing strategies for promotion and prevention in mental health, among others. It was identified that in addition to global action, there needed to be national and multi-sectorial action. However, despite the global and national imperative to work to prevent suicide, Nigeria does not have a defined national strategy to reduce suicide or promote mental well-being. Furthermore, suicide is still deemed a criminal offence liable to 12 months imprisonment if one is found to have attempted suicide. To further compound the issue, we have only 250 practicing psychiatrists in the country, and national psychiatric services are more or less confined to the national psychiatric hospitals, which by and large are fashioned like long-stay asylums, more or less abolished in more westernized countries. Knowledge of mental health is very much lacking in the general populace. Many Nigerians equate mental illness with spiritual affliction and demonstrate what I call mental health illiteracy. Mental health is shrouded in stigma and ignorance. I believe it's time for Nigeria to come into the 21st century for a change in the mental health narrative of this country, a change in legislation and for a complete rehaul of mental health provision in this country. Of course, wider psychosocial factors which increase the risk of suicide also need addressing. Suicide is a public health concern, not a criminal act. We are losing men and women in their prime. There is a need to act, and dare I say, act right now. 
those statistics are a bit, uh, I don't know. I, I admit that I don't know people who are committing suicide, and I don't know of people who are tempted and were either stopped or it didn't succeed. Really? Yeah. So I live a life where those figures are absolutely alien to, you. Alien to me. I don't know anybody wow. Wow. who has, and I don't know anybody who has died from suicide. So I'm now thinking to myself, oh, could it be? They're not, tell, they're that, not telling that, you that, that they're all these people are just that, that oh he died of um, a cold. But meanwhile, it's suicide. meanwhile it's suicide, yeah. and nobody has told me or what's going on. Because <laughs> I was shocked when I read the. Oh. I guess one of the things to say is that suicide is underreported, mm -hmm. and in our country where there's a lot of stigma Taboo. attached to mental illness, yeah. etc., yeah. I believe it will be even more underreported. Right. Even in Westernized countries, they say that for one person who is confirmed they committed suicide, it's believed that there are ten further attempts. So can you imagine in our country where I believe, I, I, I understand certain religions, if you're known to have committed suicide, they won't even want to bury, bury you, you the they church. won't want to have a service, etc. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. crazy to hear what you mm -hmm. said, that mm -hmm. if you commit suicide, you're now a criminal. I yes. mean, you're, you have yeah. to go to prison. Yes. I'm thinking, yes. that's crazy. <laughs> you know because what? you're already unstable as yeah. it is, yes. and then they incarcerate yeah. you. Yeah. But I mean, I'll just quickly say this, because I want to, my thought is, you know, I'm curious as to how we arrived at this point where the female suicide rates are so high mm -hmm. and, you know, and really push us to the third place. And I'm thinking, okay, it may have something to do with the fact that, because I know that our gen my parents' generation, when I look at them across board, mm -hmm. I haven't done a sort of experiment, they seem to be more hardy mentally mm -hmm. than our generation. Tougher, yeah. It could yeah. be that we are indulging, we're caught between this modernized, you know, internet, social media world that is outside our reach. And then the the ferocity of the things we have to deal with on a daily basis, we, somehow we haven't caught up. We, because we, you know, when they say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. We're not toughening up mm. to match up with the times we're in. And so maybe it needs to be taught in schools. Maybe we need to be better equipped socially to handle the pressures and accept that, look, we're dealing with harder times. And mm. mentally, we're not in that place maybe our parents were in because they, they're so hardy. A lot of yeah, our parents just got on tough. with it. But now mm. we're, we're a bit more... I don't know, we're confused about how to deal with the problem. We're not even accepting that we need to toughen up. There's, there's a mismatch, you know, which mm. Yeah, no, I mean, what I found interesting, I mean, because I've always known about this, and I just thought this is crazy, mm. about the criminalizing, attempting yeah. suicide. Yeah. Now, wouldn't that then push kill yourself in prison. people to actually make sure they kill themselves? Properly. Yeah, you know, rather than... Attempt and not get away yes. with it. Yeah, and, and absolutely, we really need to look at men mental health in a totally different light you know I think so many people it's, it's very stigmatized um, and I'm always very open about because I know I suffered from some mental health issues when I was younger um, and I you know I would hear voices and things like that and and because of that stigmatization I didn't really want to talk to anyone yeah. and I remember discussing with my sister and eventually discussing with my mom and I think it was just really the family and um, support that I was in that eventually got me out of where I was you know, but like, I, I don't know. I think maybe now, maybe we're even though we have social media, people are living increasingly um, Isolate. isolated yeah. lives, yes. and also they're not able to tell what is truly reality and what is false. Mm. So when you're looking at somebody else's life and it appears that they have all these wonderful things going on, there, mm -hmm. like for instance, like, there's a girl I follow. And it seems like she's on holiday all the time. <laughs> now, I don't know how she can afford it. I don't know who's paying for it. But if I was a slave mama, or, you know, this, I might be like, ah, ah, what's she doing? Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. And, and I want that too. either feeling down yeah. about it, or yeah. I now go and do something like that and put myself into further trouble, or whatever the case may be. Mm. So I think a lot of people. Young people are in that place. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. especially the young people. They mm. seem to just buy into all of this, and it seems to depress them, and then it gets them to the mm. point of, you know, so I do agree with you, uh, Ekene, in, in a lot of cases. I think there, there's a toughening up that we need to, you know, uh, and I think it's even worse for our children really? now oh. because uh, our children are so sensitive and I don't right. even know where they're getting it from because yeah. my son is highly sensitive. I'm constantly having to bring him you know, let's get tough, mm. you know? I'm always okay. telling him, like, you, you have a program for He doesn't want to feel issues. pain. I'm like, you must feel pain. That's it's, right. it's about pain. Yeah, it's it's not, not pain. part like, of it. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I'm trying to get him to toughen up because yeah. that is my only child. That's a man and he must behave like he a man. Must tough, but these up. days, Excellent. you know, I don't know what's Somebody going say you should on. tell him to behave like a man. <laughs> well, that's on that. That's on that. I'm so mad that. Chika is not aware that the government actually banned Sniper. Yes. yes. Okay. So the reason yourself. Sniper was banned was right. because people were using it to commit suicide. Yes. All over the whole place, yes. especially the younger ones. Mm -hmm. 
I'm more concerned about my perception that some of the people in leadership actually need mental health. Yes. Okay. I agree with yes. you. Yes. Uh, we can't be mentioning names okay. on, on air. Okay. But my observation of some people who are making decisions mm -hmm. affecting millions of people is that they need help. So. I agree. I wish we could How to approach yeah. dealing with I those kind of matters. Is there? And then I, and I think, I think, I think, I think in this country we need to change the narrative around mental health. Yes. The statistics show us that one in four people will have mental health difficulties. So the reality is, is either you've had mm. mental health difficulties or you would definitely know somebody in your inner circle that's had mental health difficulties. And I think so we no, just no, need to edu no, the educate deaths. the populace I that, you know, just like you have physical health, you have mental health and your mental health can be good or not so good. Why would suicide rates be increasing in this country? Well, we've had a discussion, haven't we? All the topics mm. we've discussed today have shown how difficult life is. Mm -hmm. And actually, the statistics show that suicide rate in this country has increased between quite markedly between 2012 and 2017. And I think it's related to the socioeconomic factors. I completely agree with the Kenya bill that they, and you as well, Uchi, mm -hmm. that there is a need for us to build resilience in our children. Mm -hmm. And also social media has an impact because people are living a fantasy mm -hmm. or they're believing the yes, fantasy, they're, they're believing the lie. And there's a big disconnect, isn't there, between the fantasy and the reality. And, 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 and the reality. Yes. Mm -hmm. Certainly the time to act is now. I know Ekene shares my sentiment. Why then is she calling for time out to do some celebrating? <laughs>